we have our typical view of what it's like to fall into a black hole. Uh, you cross the event horizon. The event horizon is the boundary from which you cannot escape. Once you enter a black hole, you cannot leave. One way to think of a black hole and think of an event horizon is that a black hole is there. It is pulling space-time itself towards its space-time. It's flowing inwards towards the black hole, towards the center. And it, as it gets closer to the center, it's going faster and faster and faster. At a certain point, that flow of space is faster than the speed of light itself. So if you were to try to turn around, and yes, you're allowed to do that. Um, and if you were to try to turn around and get out, you have to fight against that inrushing flow of space. And since space is flowing faster than the speed of light, you cannot travel faster than the speed of light. And so you can't escape. And everything crunches down to an infinitely tiny point called the singularity. This, however, is only the case for black holes that are static that are not rotating and do not have any electric charge. The, the simplest possible kind of black holes, uh, theoretically possible kind of black holes. But black holes in the real universe are more complicated than this. Uh, black holes we think don't generally have any electric charge because if they were to become positively charged, uh, they would just attract a bunch of neg negative charges and so it would very, very quickly even out. So in general, we don't think black holes are electrically charged one way or the other, but black holes do spin, right? Because they come from the deaths of massive stars. Stars are spinning and when they die, they're still gonna be spinning and whatever they left behind will still be spinning. And as matter flows on, it can add angular momentum to it. Like it's just, it's a spinning thing. In a spinning black hole acts differently, especially in the center of a static black hole. A rotating black hole doesn't have a point like singularity. It doesn't have an infinitely tiny point that's infinitely dense where all the matter has crushed down. Instead, the singularity is bent around into a circle. You have what's called a ring singularity. And it's possible when you look at the mathematics, the pure mathematics of what happens inside of a rotating black hole, I kid you not, when you just look at it and say, so, you know, okay, what does the mathematics of general relativity tell me of what happens in the center of a rotating black hole? In the center of a rotating black hole, you have the ring singularity. You can actually pass through the ring singularity because you're not touching the singularity. And so you don't get crushed to oblivion, so you can pass through. The ring singularity itself is the entrance to a wormhole. You can travel through this wormhole and end up in the polar opposite of a black hole. You'll end up on the inside of a white hole and you will get popped out into a different part of the universe. According to the math of general relativity, every time you form a black, a rotating black hole, there's a corresponding rotating white hole, and they are connected through this bridge through a wormhole. And white holes, uh, like I said, are the polar opposites of black holes. Uh, black holes pull everything in, and eventually they reach a point where they're pulling everything faster than the speed of light. White holes, if you're inside a white hole, you are pushed out of it faster than the speed of light. And then you cross its event horizon and you're popped out into that side of the universe. And it's impossible for you to turn around and enter a white hole, just like it's impossible for you to turn around and leave a black hole. This doesn't exist. Let me explain why it doesn't exist. The reason that that singularity in a rotating black hole is stretched into a ring is the extreme centrifugal force. This thing is rotating, right? The entire black hole is rotating, but all the matter, all the stuff has been crushed down into the center. And this creates a centrifugal force. And in general relativity, if you have enough centrifugal force, this acts like anti-gravity. You can think of, in general relativity, you can think of the centrifugal force as a form of anti-gravity. If something is spinning around enough, it can create 
a repulsive gravitational effect. In everyday life, we do not experience this because the amount of anti-gravity created by the centrifugal force is so impossible, like is so incredibly tiny that it doesn't affect anything. But this is different for a black hole. Because all the matter is scrunched down into this very tiny region, because it's rotating so fast, the amount of anti-gravity generated, and I know it sounds like I'm just making things up, but I'm not. This is coming from the mathematics. The amount of anti-gravity generated by the centrifugal force is actually felt, is actually powerful, and actually dominates at the center. That's what stretches that point-like singularity into a ring. But this also means that the center of a black hole, is, of a rotating black hole, is not dominated by gravity pulling in, but by gravity pushing out. So if like a little bit of radiation were to like, you can imagine, like fall into the black hole, fall into the event horizon, it's rushing inwards towards the center, towards that uh, singularity at the center, it's going to meet a spot where the anti-gravity caused by the centrifugal force is so strong that it actually turns around and pushes back out. And then it gets stuck. Because any further inside that black hole, it wants to go in. And any closer, it wants to get pushed out. So it ends up building a wall. It builds a wall. And we call this region the event horizon, or the inner event horizon. So the outer event horizon is the boundary of no return. Once you cross it, you can't leave. But the inner event horizon is this boundary place between the inrushing material and the outrushing gravity. And that applies not just to one photon, but any light that has ever fallen into the black hole gets stuck at this boundary. And because it's forced from the outside to go in and forced from the inside to go out, it gets stuck and gets ramped up in energy all the way to infinite energies, infinitely blue shifted, infinitely high energies at this inner event horizon. So if you were to actually fall into a rotating black hole, everything would be fine until you reach the inner event horizon. In which case you would be met with a wall of infinitely high, infinitely blue shifted radiation that is a reflection of all the material, all the things that have ever fallen into the black hole before. So not only would you die, but the presence of the inner horizon tells us that we're doing something wrong. Because the basic starting assumption for constructing a black hole, whether it's stationary or rotating, is that all the matter is concentrated in, into, an inf, into a tiny point. It's concentrated in the singularity. But the inner event horizon is a layer where there's tons of matter and energy. All Everything that's ever fallen into the black hole gets stuck at that event horizon. So which is it? Is all the matter in the singularity or is all the matter in the event horizon? You can't have both. The mathematics have broken down. The mathematics have revealed a contradiction happening inside of a rotating black hole. Where it's saying, yes, all the material is in the center, is in the singularity, and yes, all the material is in the inner event horizon. You can't have both. This is a logical contradiction, which is not allowed in mathematics. What this is telling us is that we are misunderstanding the physics of the interiors of black holes, of rotating black holes. That there is no wormhole, there is probably no ring singularity, there's no white hole at the other end, there's probably no event horizon. We actually have no idea what is going on. So can you fall into a rotating black hole and pop out at the other side of the universe? Probably not, but to be perfectly honest, we've got no idea. Hope you enjoyed watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And please go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to learn how you can keep these episodes going. And I'll see you next time.